Hey friends, welcome back for episode three. I'm here with Ash behind the camera. My name is Eric and we are at the Harvest Home Studio and we are checking out the Mackie Onyx 8 mixer and interface along with Performer Magazine and Mackie. Now, we've got the interface hooked up to the computer in episode two. Now we're gonna set it up for recording. I have two channels set up in my DAW one for Ash's vocals and one for Ash's guitar. So in channel one, I'm going to take the end of that mic cable and go directly in there. This is channel two for the guitar. And now here I have an insert cable. I wanna show you the insert. So below the channel inputs, the microphone channel inputs, we have this insert here. So I've got an insert cable coming out of there. Uh, it splits off in a Y, the cable itself, and it will send the signal out from the channel into my compressors over there where I'm gonna compress Ash's vocals. And then the other end comes back out of the compressors and into the Mackie board. So I'll take you to the back of the compressors and show you that in just a moment. We've got the other end of the insert cable. The tip is the send, the ring is the return. So the tip, I'm gonna go into the input of my Warm Audio WA76, 1176 style compressor. I'm sending out of the 1176, into the Warm Audio WA-2A, an LA-2A style, and then the ring is gonna send out of the output back to the channel. All right, so here's Ash. She's set up to record some vocals and guitars. We've got her vocals on the SM7B and the guitar going through a C414. Okay, we are back here at the Onyx 8 and we're gonna start getting our line level. First, I'll engage the Phantom Power to power the Cloud Lifter on the 7B and the dynamic mic on Ash's guitar. So Ash, can you start strumming? As she starts strumming, I'm bringing up the channel gain and I'm looking to get a healthy signal in my DAW. So look up here. I can see that that's hitting right around negative 12 on the peaks, which is great. Come back to the board for Ash's vocals. Starting here. He stole my breath and it shook me to the core. All right, so I'm getting an overlight signal here. So I'm going to go check on my compressors and everything, and I'll come back. Okay, so I adjusted the compressors, and now we can see that Ash is getting a nice signal on her vocals. Some nights you sing for no one in the corner of a bar. So over on the right side, we've got the studio command, and this is where we can control our effects sends. So I want a plate reverb for her vocal. So just press this to select. And here uh, I can scroll through the decay time, the size, the high cut, which um, if you press this in, it engages the filter. I chose to cut that all the way down. And then coming over to the EQ, uh, we've got a low pass filter, which I have cut all the way back to 6,000. Uh, the high pass, I filtered up to 400, sort of like that Abbey Rhodes idea. And then here I, I chose 1800 Hertz and I took a a good a negative four I don't know what the value is but I went to negative four cutting that in the middle to take out that metallic hollow sound on the plate 
and now I'm gonna send some to Ash's vocal as she sings. Um, down here is the overall effects volume. So I got it at Unity and this is Ash's vocal channel. And so we're gonna send some of this to her while she sings. So Ash. Maybe one day thousands will know all of my songs. Little less. And we'll come back to Boston and you will all sing along. That's nice. Maybe I'll have children and I'll write them lullabies. Yeah, that's good. All right, there's one other pointer that I want to highlight, okay? And this has to do with monitoring the, the signal coming out of the DAW. You want to, or you need to engage this USB 1.2 if your monitoring is coming out through um, channel one and two out of your DAW, which mine is. If it's off, you won't hear anything. So you want that in and then you use this level for channel three, four to control the volume of what you're hearing out of your DAW. There are a few features that I want to discuss briefly in regards to monitoring and recording. So in regards to your gain input here and its relationship to your fader, this fader is going to control um, the send over to your main out, which goes through your main output speakers. Uh, this is not related to recording at all. So it's not like a 1073 where you have an input drive, you go through the EQs and then you have your trim at the, at the back end. This is just for monitoring and this is the gain going into your DAW. What that means is that as you adjust these EQs, you're only affecting your monitoring send. You're not actually EQing the send into your DAW. It's after the preamp, okay? So the EQ doesn't affect the sound going into your DAW. And I wouldn't want you to think that you can record um, using the EQ. The EQ is for the live setting or for your monitoring while you're, you're recording. So really like your headphone sends. Another important note here is in regards to monitoring with your studio speakers. So to come out of your DAW and into your um, room speakers, you want to have either in uh, USB 1.2 engaged or 3.4, depending on what you're, what you're coming out of in your DAW. I send out of channel 1 and 2, so engaging that allows me to hear my playback. Disengaging it, I won't hear the playback through the main speakers. So you want to engage this when you're listening. Disengage if you're going to record on channel 3.4 because it mutes the input. The other thing to consider is that when you are listening, if you have mics live, hit mute before you listen in your room so you don't get uh, a feedback loop. I figured that out the hard way. Over here, this button is um, post fader or pre fader monitoring. Okay, and this is when you have your solo button engaged. So basically what you can do here is you monitor before you have set your, I mean, um, affected your fader using the EQ and the panning. And then if you engage it, um, if it's out disengaged, then you hear what you're doing on your channel. So, um, and similar with the EQ pressed in, the EQ is engaged, disengaged, the EQ is out. You have your raw 
your uh, channel. I think that covers the important features that I wanted to discuss. Let's hear what we got. Sounds pretty good. I like it. To wrap up, I'd like to offer some final takeaways on my experience with the mixer itself. Overall, the quality for the price point is really great. You get a lot of great features in a unit that can act in a live setting and in a studio setting. In the live setting, you have a very usable EQ and also some great effects in the studio command. In the studio setting, you have the ease of a USB connection and these analog inputs to record directly into your DAW. As far as the sound quality of the preamps, I would compare it to the Focusrite Scarlet series, which I've had some experience with. They're a little bit on the darker side, but it's very usable sound. If I were to recommend the, the Mackie Onyx 8, it would be to folks who are podcasting, who are doing home recording, and also looking to have a unit that they can take out to the gigs. Um, in a live setting, I would say a solo artist, duo, or up to a four-piece band could get a lot of use out of something like the Mac Onyx 8. I hope that this introduction to the Onyx 8 was helpful and that it inspires you most importantly to go out and make some music. So keep rocking. <laughs>